In this video, I am going to show you how to make circles and ellipses via the mesh grid. Now I've cheated and started with what we started with in the previous MATLAB session, which is a standard linear mesh grid. So I did physical width and height of 10, and I'm doing 100 points along X, so that will calculate also to 100 points along Y. Then to calculate the mesh grid, I first calculate the grid resolution or the size of the cells on the grid. I then calculated my axis vectors, and then I calculated my linear mesh grid. So at this point, I want to create my radial mesh grid. So we'll say RSQ for R squared is X squared plus Y squared. And let's go ahead and look at that. So we will visualize radial grid. And let's do image SC, XAYA, RSQ, dot apostrophe. And the dot apostrophe is because we're imaging an array and not a matrix, so we have to transpose it. Axis equal tight, color bar, and let's give it a title to remind ourselves what it is we're looking at. We're looking at RSQ. And if I haven't made any typos, we should see our radial grid. Okay, so our radial grid is, has a value of zero at the origin, zero, zero, and it increases going outward. Well, you know what, one thing I'd like to do, maybe now that we're doing circles, let's center our grid right at the middle. And a variety of ways to do that, but what I tend to like to do is just follow my, after I calculated my axis vector, I would just say XA equals XA minus the mean value of XA. And certainly I could tweak all the numbers in here just to do this directly. But, you know, for some reason, I always seem to do it this way. YA is YA minus mean value of YA. And now when we run it, our radial grid is centered. And so each value on this grid is the distance squared from the origin. And so right away, we can see already how we can make a circle. Let's say we want a circle that has a radius somewhere around here. So this is that light bluish color. Uh, you know, maybe that's like a value of 17 or so. So let's see what that radius is. So square root of 17 would be a radius of around four. So let's go ahead and let's pl subplot one subplot tall, two subplots wide, and we're going to go to the first subplot. And let's say calculate. Or let's say build a circle, build a circle. So C is anywhere RSQ is less than or equal to this little r squared and the little r squared, the little r is what we'll define as four. And just for aesthetic purposes, we will put this in parentheses. Okay, I'm gonna run this. It's not gonna do anything different. I just wanna make sure there's no errors. Okay, and then we'll add our visualization where we look at our circle. Visualize object. Oh, I accidentally hit a tab in there. Object. And this time we'll go to the second subplot. We want to look at C. And this is our object now. OK, let's go ahead and run it. And we see a circle at just about where we define. Now, I don't usually go in, look at the colors, and figure out my radius that way. I'm usually building some kind of device, and I have specific dimensions in mind, and I will set my radius according to those very specific dimensions. Okay, so what if we wanted an ellipse? Well, an ellipse has two different radiuses. So we're going to have a radius in X, and we'll have a radius in Y. Let's make this one less. Let's make that two. So for ellipses, I tend to not use this radial grid directly. I'll go back to the X and Y mesh grid. So here's what I'll do. Let's, let's do it this way. So we're going to have an X squared plus Y squared, and we'll do a less than or equal to R X squared. So at this point, we're creating an ordinary circle with the same radius. So we had radius before, so it should look like the same thing. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide all of these terms by Rx. So I'm going to divide x by Rx. 
I will divide y by rx. And when I divide rx by rx, I get 1. So if I run this again, I should see the same exact circle. However, this gives me an opportunity now to assign a unique radius to the y-axis, and I'll call that ry. Let's go ahead and run that. Now we have an ellipse. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Make it 3 and 1. Let's see what that looks like. Now let's say I would also like to offset that. Well, to offset that, we need to define a center position. So let's call that x naught and y naught. And oh, let's make the center position somewhere around here. So let's say that's minus 2.5 for x. And for the y naught, that'll be minus 3, maybe? Something like that. OK, so then all we have to do is go ahead and then subtract that center position from both x and y. OK, let's go ahead and run this. Now we should have an ellipse that's been offset in position. That's exactly what has happened. And, you know, we could we could reverse things, reverse the radiuses. And we now have infinite control. We can move a circle around, the ellipsoid around. We can control the, the different radiuses. And so we have infinite control now over adding circles and ellipses wherever we want to. I hope this was helpful.